During the season of Lent, the River Valley Ministerial Association is sharing words from the penitential psalms. The penitential psalms are psalms the church has grouped together of confession and sorrow and humility. They are usually used during the season of Lent and Ash Wednesday. The psalms in general are songs and poems from 3,000 years ago written by various authors from Israel. They're, they're psalms, there are psalms that are full of thanks and praise. Some are calling for justice and asking for help. Some predict a future, a prophetic hope of a Messiah to come. In general, uh, I've heard it said that the psalms are God's king leading God's people into God's presence to sing God's praise. And the journey of praise is not one that's always upbeat. Like life, we don't constantly have happy days. There are cloudy days and dark days. And so it is the season of Lent and Psalm 6 and the penitential psalms. Today I want to share Psalm 6. It's one of those penitential psalms. If you have a Bible, let me encourage you to look on with me. Psalm 6 begins this way in verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Don't rebuke me. Don't discipline me. Don't rebuke me. I, I, I think I can relate. Can you relate to David who, who asks God not to rebuke him, not to discipline him, not to correct him? The psalmist then asks God for four things. If you have your Bibles, look at verse 2. It says this, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul is also greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord. Deliver my life. Save me. David asked God to be gracious, to heal to deliver, and to save. Be gracious, heal, deliver, and save. Why? Why did David ask that? He must have been languishing. He must have been in trouble. During the season of Lent, we can think about our own trouble, our own trials, our own needs, our own languishing. One of the niceties of the Psalms is it doesn't shy away from the harsher realities of life. God wants us to be honest, to talk with Him. He wants us to go to Him in our need. It's good to be transparent and authentic with God. I have a friend, I was talking to him the other day, and he's, he has a problem with talking to God. He doesn't want to bother him. God isn't like us, friends. He's not like us where he can only focus on one thing at a time, or he's too busy. He can multitask. He can listen to you. He can listen to me. He can listen to the whole world simultaneously. Why? Because he's God. He's not too busy. In fact, I would wager to, to guess this is part of the reason why Psalm 6 is here. It's an example for us. It's a permission slip. It's an encouragement for us to go to God in the midst of our sorrow, in the midst of our weeping, in the midst of our hardship. Look at verse 4 if you have your Bibles again. And see David's song he sings with a boldness like a lion. Look at the second part of verse 4. It says, why, why does he go to God with, with this fourfold request? For the sake of your steadfast love, he says to God. Verse 4. Verse 5. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I dredge my couch with my weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It, grows weak because of all my 
folks, so in these four verses, we see David appeals to God's character, to God's wisdom. In the context of his own weakness. Why? Why did he do that? Did he, was he sharing something with God that God doesn't know? No. Was he trying to convince God? Yeah. Can we convince God? I don't think God was learning anything new. Why does he make his appeal like this? He was having a conversation. He was arguing his case. He was telling God what he thought. And we hear underneath that his faith, his belief in several things. One, we see he believes in God's steadfast love. He believes that God is worthy to be praised. And he believes God is a God of mercy and compassion. And out of that character, and out of that faith, and out of that belief, he is convinced that in prayer, God can act. And he's known this through his own tradition, and we see this in the, the Bible, through prayer. God heard the cries, the pleading of, of, of 400 years of slavery from the people of Israel, and he frees them. God hears the prayer of his people, and he parts the Red Sea. God hears the hunger and thirst, and he provides water out of rock and bread from heaven. God hears prayer. And maybe during Lent, it's a season of renewal, and a renewal of a season of prayer to God and conversation to God. God wants a relationship. The, the psalmist not only is a, a prayer, but it's also a, it's also a conversation with uh, David's enemies. He says this uh, in verse 8. This is one little verse, and it goes on to say why, but here's the verse. He says this to his enemies. He's talking to God, now he's talking to his enemies. Look at verse 8. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. Why? Depart from me. Get away from me, workers of evil. Why? Well, he says this, and the rest of 8 and 9 and 10. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. The psalm begins with this desire for God not to rebuke him in his anger, not to discipline in his wrath, but seeks God's grace and seeks God's help, and seeks God's mercy. He tells him why. He, he asks for this. He tells the, the wicked, the, his enemy, to stand off, depart. And why? Because he has faith that God not only will hear, but he has heard. And that there are consequences for Injustice. The psalmist states his faith. God hears his prayer. And he will punish the wicked. You know, although David was a king, he was a military leader, he was a warrior, he was a, a musician and a shepherd, he was a husband, he was a father, he had great needs. And he writes this out of experience of persecution, betrayal, and danger. Maybe you have great needs. Maybe you have hardship. What do you do with that? During the season of Lent, Let's seek to be honest with God, where we're coming from. Let's remember who our God is. David had hope in a future king that was prophesied to come after him. A future descendant, 
He didn't know his name. And we know his name. His name is Jesus. And he came. And he lived. And he died. That we might experience God's grace. That we might experience God's deliverance. Heavenly healing. And salvation. That we would be freed from the consequence of our sin because Jesus not only lived, he died, he died. And, and as we move closer and closer to Easter, we see he will die. But Easter itself tells us the story doesn't end with Jesus' death. The story continues when he is risen from the dead on Easter Sunday. So as we approach that wonderful day of celebration, Let's prepare our hearts by being honest with God in our weakness, in our hardship. Let's go to God and be authentic and share with him where we're at. Let's go to God and ask for help and grace in our time of need. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to look at your word. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. Thank you for your opportunity to respond to your word. Help us now as we prepare our hearts this week, as we go to you in our weaknesses, in our hardships, in our trials and difficulties. Some are struggling with financial difficulties, others with health ailments. Some struggle with relational conflict. All of us have sin that can cling so closely. Lord, thank you that we can turn from our sin and turn to you. Thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for those sins, that you paid the penalty, and, and in faith we can be free from condemnation and guilt and shame and experience grace and forgiveness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you and tune in next week to our next devotional from the River Valley Ministerial Association.